But it has been a problem. Look how rare this is the last 80 years. Only Nick Saban's Alabama teams, the great Nebraska teams in the mid-90s. Then you have to go back to the 50s and 40s with Oklahoma and Notre Dame. The five repeat champions, Kirby Smart is trying to do that about 98 minutes away from the start of this national championship game. And pleased to be joined by the new head coach at Colorado, the great Deion Sanders is here. <laughs> Try to get the memo that we were all wearing ties. <laughs> hey, nobody. All of us. Even him. Even him. All he all went from tank top to tie. Wow. You know what? <laughs> Dion is here scouting. You're yeah. starting your season with TCU next yeah. year. Oh, you know? wow. Well, well, Maybe. May that may change. Oh, it may change. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 what, what, what hasn't has changed? Change. <laughs> what hasn't changed? Hey, what hasn't changed is the difficulty of repeating. You know what it's like as a player. You right. were able to repeat as a Super Bowl champion mm -hmm. and then tried to do it with the team the following year, and it didn't work out. How, how difficult is that? Why is it difficult? It, it, it's not easy. It's very difficult because you have new guys coming in. The main thing is you want those guys that you're counting on to be the guys that you're counting on. Unfortunately, some of those guys lay an egg. Some of those guys don't show up, and that's the problem. When the main guys don't show up for you, that poses a severe problem. Well, you know, relief syndrome is sort of a human condition that we all have when we have success. And success is not a continuum, it's momentary. So how do you get people, as you say, everyone to refocus and recenter and do the things they need to do to continue to face the challenges? Because when you win a championship, you become the target. Everybody right. else wants to beat you even more. Right. So it's even more important for you to create the right habits. Complacency, blatant disregard for doing what's right. Mm -hmm. And then you create the wrong habits. And you go out and play, and you when the game comes, you want to win. When the game comes, you want to go do what you got to do. But you didn't put the preparation in. You didn't practice. You didn't create the habits. So you don't have the success that you want to have. And then you get a little frustrated, and things don't work out like you like. Coach, I think all of us who follow college football, you won it in 09. And, and, and that football team was your first at Alabama. And yet every year since, you've either been in it or been close to it and won so many. Right. The psychological aspect of what Kirby and his team has been dealing with, he lost five first rounders off the defense last year. Right. This young team came in. His selling point to them was what you heard from, from A.J. McCarron. You haven't done anything yet. That was the guys that are in the NFL now, and they really bought into that. Do you have to play kind of psychological warfare with the guys to get them ready that second year? I, there's no question about it. But some guys buy into it, and some guys don't. And just like our team – last year after we won in 20 and 21 I was so frustrated with our team because we weren't practicing we weren't preparing we were doing the things we needed to do and we go play at Texas A&M and lay an egg get behind 24 to 7 come back get ahead 38 31 with five minutes to go to the game yep. I look at the scoreboard and I say what am I going to say to this team <laughs> if we win yeah <laughs> Because yeah. we played so poorly. Right. And the worst thing you can do to me in any sport <laughs> is play poorly and win. Yeah. Because then nobody wants to respond the right way to correct the things you need to correct. So it, it's a really, really difficult task. I think Tur Kirby's done a great job really has. Right, with this team yeah. because they haven't skipped the beat. They, 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 they played well all year long. Yeah. And I think you and Bill Belichick have obviously done a fantastic job yeah. of being able to continue greatness. And, you know, I, I don't know if it was you, Bill, or maybe Prime talking, but obviously the enemy of great is good, right? Because once you get good, you start getting content. You don't want to continue to work. The enemy of a dynasty is winning one championship and letting it go. Prime, you're obviously going to Colorado, a place that's been looking for some sort of championship for 20 years. You're also one of the greatest speakers I've ever heard. You're Kirby Smart talking to these boys, and let's act like you're going to be doing this in Colorado in a very, hey, we're trying to win now, right. in a very near future. What are you saying to your team? Well, well first of all, you got to get your their guys, their main guys. To, they don't have to buy in. This is how we do it. This is what we do. So it's just consistency. It's the consistency that has to be established, not only on the practice field, but off the field. And those guys have to be the same. You can't get here and all of a sudden change. Yeah, you don't want to see a different mannerism of somebody, <laughs> and especially the coach. You see, everybody's talking about the players. Yeah. But you got to coach the coaches, too. Yeah. The coaches cannot get complacent, and they can't look around and start thinking about jobs and going elsewhere and right. thinking about their next move. They, has to be, they have to be consistent as well. When I was drafted in 1992, the Washington at that point was the Redskins, now the Commanders, they had won the Super Bowl. 
And Coach Gibbs, he was so stressed trying to win it again, trying to repeat. And he used to talk about that. He would talk to the players and he would talk to the coaches. And I remember we played Atlanta. And Deion Sanders was on the Falcons. And it was like my, one of my first games. And here I am about to return the punt. Brian Mitchell was back there with me. He threw a lateral. I took the punt all the way to the house. My first touchdown. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm happy. Deion, what happened after that? I was so mad. <laughs> I was so upset. I wasn't even returning punts. I told the punt return, get the kickoff return. Kick off, kick get off, off, kick off. Get off the field. I got this. I took it to the house and looked over at Dez and said, what? <laughs> what? Oh, that's the pressure trying to repeat, baby. Is, you know what I mean? That is crazy. He took it personal. That's yeah. awesome. Deion, that's, that's a great, great story. to have you with us. Thank and, uh, you. If you decide that the TCU Colorado game's not happening, let us know first. Yeah. <laughs> Arizona. Arizona State may happen. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. All right, All we need is a duck out here. We can do a commercial. There you have it. Nick Saban and Deion Sanders breaks down the game. One thing that you look at when you examine how they see this thing going to play out, which is the psychology of it, of the coaching. Make sure you stay consistent. Make sure you th- keep things the same and don't look to alter all. <laughs> make sure you don't look to shift up too much from how you normally are doing things. And I think that's important is being consistent and fighting through. But let me know what you think. Champ- National championship game is upon us. Georgia versus TCU. You have Nick Saban. You have Deion Sanders take on the game. Who do you think will win? If I had to make a prediction, I say Georgia, who I want to win is is TCU because of what that implication is for college football moving forward, which says the transfer the transfer portal does work. There's more than one way to win this thing. All right, that's all I got. Catch you guys on the flip. Peace. <laughs>